What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have a view of the Atlantic Ocean right now. I am pleased to report 97L has dissipated. 96L is on the verge of dissipation as well. Only a 30% chance of development in the next seven days. It was 80% yesterday. Just keep that in mind. It was 80. Now it's dropped down to 30. So this is what we have going on right here. Showers and thunderstorms remain disorganized in association with a low pressure area located about 800 miles north northeast of the low, uh, northern leeward islands. Environmental conditions are becoming less favorable for tropical cycl uh, cyclone formation. Excuse me, and the low is expected to merge with a frontal system over the north central Atlantic in about two to three days. 30% chance of development once again. So that's what we have going on right here, and that will most likely be. Our last update on 97L, but I want to go ahead and make this video and talk a little bit about what we could potentially be seeing in the month of August. Today is August 1st, and this is the month where hurricane season really starts to ramp up. We're going to go ahead and start with your global sea temperatures right here. They've been updated. We have a massive area of 29 plus degrees or 84 uh, degree Fahrenheit te water temperatures right here. If we go ahead and go to the greater scale right here. If we take a look at this, we're looking at a lot of areas of 30 plus degrees Celsius in the Gulf, pretty much around Cuba, through, through Jamaica, through parts of Haiti right here, and through most of the Bahamas, parts of the Carolina coast right here, parts of the Atlantic, and even parts of the main development region as well, which is something you do not want to see right here. I've been doing this stuff since 2020, and I have never seen 30 plus degrees Celsius waters in the main development region, and I may have seen like a little bit of it, but I haven't seen it at this big of a, this much of a scale at all. These are record warm temperatures right here, and they are only going to continue to increase as time continues to go on. This 28, 29 degrees Celsius waters goes through much of the main development region. We have 27 degrees Celsius water is going pretty much uh, pretty much to east of New Jersey, which is something you absolutely do not want to see, considering that, let's say, a tropical system moves to the north. It has plenty of time to organize and strengthen into a hurricane and potentially impact parts of the east coast over there. So that's the first big problem we have. Second thing we need to talk about is the ocean heat content, or OHC. Today's August 1st. Here's our updated OHC. Across much of the Caribbean Sea, we have a ton of OHC over 150 at over 150 kilojoules per centimeter squared, which for those of you who don't know exactly what that number means, that's a lot of uh, energy right there for these hurricanes to feed off of. We're seeing a lot of areas of over 100 OHC across much of the main development region, across parts of the Atlantic, everything all, all the in between right there. So this is definitely something that has been very concerning for me to look at all, all across the board. We're even seeing areas of over 125 OHC in parts of the main development region over here. So that's especially alarming right there. And if we compare that back to 2020, not nearly as expansive, ladies and gentlemen, not nearly as expansive. And that's a huge issue right there. I actually want to go ahead and show you the bit of the water depth at 26 plus degrees Celsius. And if we're looking at water depth... Across much of the main development region, across much of the Atlantic Ocean, like it's already pretty alarming. But if you look at the Caribbean, we're seeing values of well over 100 meters of 80 degree Fahrenheit waters deep. And that's going to uh, be a lot of fuel for systems and hurricanes like this. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the wind shear uh, component to this. And the wind shear has been decreasing. The wind shear has been decreasing across much of the main development region. It's been decreasing across parts of the Atlantic. It's been fluctuating in the Western Atlantic over here in the Gulf, in the Caribbean, in the, across the Bahamas over here, which it's basically telling me that the water temperatures, despite it being an El Nino year, the water temperatures are really what's going to be carrying this season right here. And I've been looking at the numbers, and the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season so far has already been the fourth most active on record behind 2020, 2017, and I'm not 100% sure what the other one is, but I know this is quite impressive right here. So that's what we have going on. The water temperatures are piping hot. The shear and the dry air are right on schedule. So we're going to go ahead and show you what's next right here. So here's what we have going on for today. You see shear starting to decrease, and that's going to continue through tomorrow and I believe Thursday. And then 
it sure does start to increase a bit more in the main development region as more, as more stuff comes off of the coast of Africa right here. But across the western Atlantic, it decreases considerably. It does continue to fluctuate for the next little while or so. But down, but all around, there's a downward trend that I've been noticing. So that's what we have going on. This is 10 days out right here. And one thing I want to go ahead and talk about is... We all see this decrease in shear across much of the Atlantic Ocean right here. And if we were taking this by itself, I'd be especially concerned with potential development. However, there is one thing, and I mentioned this earlier, that's holding it back, and it's the dry air and the Sahara dust. But even then, it's even starting to see a downward trend. We're not seeing nearly as much Sahara dust as we were seeing even 72 hours ago across much of the Atlantic. So... That already in itself is pretty alarming. In the next two days, it is expected to continue across the, the Atlantic and basically be our last line of defense before these things start to really ramp up. But as time continues to go on and we get into the second week of August, there is one last burst of dry air. But ultimately, it starts to become a pattern of we're going to see a couple of days of dry air, a couple of days of moist air, and it's going to continue off and on, off and on, off and on. And we'll go ahead and show you the GFS to kind of give you a better grasp and get you a little bit further out, about six days further out, to kind of under, get you to understand what we're looking at right here. And if we're taking a look at the shear forecast, this is about 12 days out, I believe, and the shear and the moisture component gets the water the air gets really moist across the Caribbean across the Gulf of Mexico right here and if we go ahead and cross check that with the shear forecast right here well there is still a bit of shear right there but development is definitely possible in these conditions and the GFS is calling for a potential hurricane to hit Mexico but considering this is 16 days out when it's going on I'm not too inclined to trust it so just take it with a grain of salt now we're going to go ahead and show you something else that I want to talk about this is the European ensembles, and we're going to go ahead and show you all three of the ensemble runs because what I've been seeing lately has absolutely been keep, uh, keeping me on my toes. Here's what we have going on. We start seeing potential tropical development about a week or, or, or out or so, according to the European, and then things start to gradually organize, gradually strengthen into tropical storms, into hurricanes as they make it through the greater Antilles. Some of them keep it in the Atlantic, others keep it through the Caribbean, which I will say if we see scenario, this thing go, going through the Caribbean. It's gonna it, the shear is going to definitely try to, uh, to knock it down, but it has plenty of warm water, plenty of OHC to kind of make up for that. But things continue to go on. This is the European forecast. And by 15 days out, they are calling for several scenarios of hurricanes approaching the Bahamas, approaching Mexico, approaching Cuba, approaching Florida, approaching Louisiana, approaching much of the U.S. right here. So that in itself is pretty alarming. But I've cross-checked it with the GFS and GPS ensembles. And, and I'm going to go ahead and show you that with the zero Z component right here. And the zero Zs kind of are in agreement right here. And as you can see with the GFS, they are continuing to call for development, although they are a bit more to the north. They have a bit of a northward bias according with the GFS. But even still, still, they are still calling for potential impacts in the United States in the next 12 days or so, which, again, taken with a grain of, take it with a grain of salt. It's not going to be 100% accurate, but I am noticing a trend of all these models right here. Now we'll show you the GPS ensembles and give you kind of a, uh, the cliff notes with this. The GPS ensembles are in agreement with, main, with the European, essentially, and they're calling for tropical development potentially impacting the Lesser Antilles and Greater Antilles before approaching the United States and potentially impacting areas like Florida, Louisiana, Texas, those areas right there. So definitely something very alarming to keep a look and keep an eye on. We'll continue to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Thank you so much for 3,000 subscribers. It means a lot to me, guys. And if you guys could continue to hit the subscribe button, if you're a new viewer, come, could please continue hit the subscribe button. It means the world to me, man. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.